want to call the Griffin Spalding County Board of Education meeting for 12-7-2021. We're going to ask that everybody please, ma'am, and please, sir, put your electronic communication devices on silent or vibrate. And at this time, we're going to uh, turn to our board mate, Mr. Cynthia Brown, to give us our Griffin Spalding County School Spotlight School. Good evening, Mr. Leader, and good evening to everyone in the audience. Our school spotlight for December 2021 is Beaverbrook Elementary School. Let's give them a hand. How many scholars attend your school? 301. What is your school mascot? The Beaver. How many faculty and staff members work at your school? 49 certified and classified faculty and staff. A quote from the principal on why you love being the proud principal of the school. Beaverbrook Elementary is a small school nestled amongst the pines. It's a happy place where scholars feel welcome and they like that they are a part of a family giving unconditional love to those around them. I'm proud to be the principal because Beaverbrook is a school where I know children are cared about and are encouraged to be and do their best each and every day. Beaverbrook is a community school that former students have fond memories of, many of them still living in the community, while some are working here now. I love to hear stories about impactful teachers or when I bump into parents and they tell me that they miss Beaverbrook. It means we made a lasting impression. Our small school houses greatness, kindness, and amazing potential. What are the good things going on at the school socially and educationally? We want our scholars to feel involved, recognized, and appreciated, so we utilize PBIS to celebrate our scholars. We also have a daily shout out during the end of the day announcements so that adults and scholars can thank and recognize the good deeds and characteristics of others. It means a lot when students recognize each other or the adults for being kind or helpful, and I value their participation more than anything. Educationally, we are working as a unit to challenge and support our scholars. Beaverbrook works to make everyone feel welcome. Many have said that family is one of the things that they think about when asked what makes Beaverbrook special. We promote compassion, understanding, and inclusiveness across all grades and classrooms. We have the highest expectations for all of our scholars because we recognize that by providing a challenging education in a supportive environment, positions our scholars, position our scholars for future success. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we present to you our 2021 December Spotlight, Beaverbrook Elementary School. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> Beaverbrook is located in District 5, so at this time I ask that Dr. Mallard, faculty, staff members, join the board, and Ms. McDonald from the 5th District will present your certificate. Mr. Chair, that concludes the spotlight. Thank you, Mr. Brown. With that being said, uh, we are going to include Beaverbrook to give us a little something special uh, with our pledge. Uh, Mr. Doss is going to give our prayer, and then we're going to ask <clears throat> uh, our two students from Beaverbrook to come up. We're going to ask that Cindy Glass Katika and Scarlett Maldonado Salgado to come and stand and take your places uh, to lead us in the pledge and they're going to do it not only in English but also in Spanish because the Beaverbrook is a very diverse school 
In fact, they have 21% of their students who are Latino, Hispanic descent. So uh, they're going to share a part of their cultural diversity by doing the pledge in Spanish and also in English. So Mr. Dawson, if you would give us our prayer and then we'll proceed to our pledge. Sure. Let, Let us stand. stand. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this evening. Lord, we thank you for Griffin Spalding County. We thank you, Lord, for all parents, teachers, administrators, students, Lord, every person here. We ask, Father, Lord, during this holiday season that you continue to guide and direct and protect. We ask, Father, Lord, for this meeting tonight that you'll give us your wisdom and direction in all the business things that we do. We thank you, Father, Lord, for these students that are getting ready to, to lead us in this pledge, that you will bless them, Lord. Thank you for the diversity and example that they are giving to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yo prometo lealtad a la bandera de los Estados Unidos de América y a la república que representa una nación bajo Dios entera con libertad y justicia para todos. Thank you. Wonderful job. At this time, we're going to <clears throat> adopt the agenda as presented to us with any uh, corrections or addendums. Could I get a motion to adopt the, gen the agenda as presented? So moved. We got a motion. Can we get a second? Second. We got a motion and a second. All in favor, show by raising your right hand. 5 0. Thank you. Next, we're going to uh, throw it back to Mr. Brown with our Griffin Spalding County system announcement. Thank you so, so much, Mr. Leader. Our student scholar clerks are very busy and so they are unable to attend tonight so i'll be giving you the announcements friday december 17th is the az kelsey graduation located at the griffin region college and career academy at 9 30 a.m december 20th through december 31st the griffin spalding county school system is on christmas break december 20th through december 31st the griffin spalding county school system is on break tuesday january 4th 2022 the griffin spalding county board of education meeting will be held at 216 south 6th street Griffin, Georgia at 6 p.m. Tuesday, January 18th, Griffin Spalding County Schools Board of Education work session, 216 South 6th Street at 6 p.m. Tuesday, January 18th, the Griffin Spalding County Board of Education will have a work session uh, here at 216 South 6th Street at 4 p.m. That concludes the report, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, at this time, we're gonna throw it to our board mate uh, Ms. Barbara Jo Cook for our recognition. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The first item, 2021 Inclusive Schools Week, GSCS Agents of Inclusion, Mr. Adam Pugh. Good evening. All right. Good evening, board, Chairman Holmes, Superintendent Simmons, and guests in attendance tonight. My name is Charles Kelly. I'm the director of the Department of Exceptional Students. And this is Ms. D. Vance Collier. She's our lead speech language pathologist, our teacher of the visually impaired, and also a cluster leader for Moore and Ann Street. So she has a long title there. <laughs> right. So uh, inclusive. Uh, Inclusive Schools Network's 21st Annual Inclusive Schools Week is December 6th through 12th this week. In Sc Inclusive Schools Week highlights and celebrates the progress schools have made in providing a supportive and quality education to all students 
including those who are marginalized due to disability, gender, ethnicity, geography, and language. This year, the Griffin Spalding County Schools Department of Exceptional Students would like to recognize the district's local lead special education teachers who guide the work of supporting students with disabilities at the school level. These dedicated professionals perform many vital hidden tasks that contribute to the success of our students and facilitate the work to keep our school communities inclusive. The 2021 GSCS Agents of Inclusion are Ms. Joan Puckett from Ann Street Elementary. Amanda Franklin, Atkinson Elementary. Jamie Bennett, Beaverbrook Elementary. Teachers, if you would come back. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah. If I have to stand up here, you guys have to stand up here. So that's the deal. <laughs> All right, uh, sorry. Gwen LaBeouf, Cowan Elementary. Nicole Smith, Crescent Elementary. <laughs> Wendy Turner, Future Road Elementary. <laughs> Ebony Willis, Jackson Road Elementary. <laughs> Latoya McGee, Moore Elementary. <laughs> Amy Word, Moreland Road Elementary. Cresta Barba, Barber, Ors Elementary. <laughs> Danielle Johnson, Carver Road Middle School. <laughs> Robin Walker, Cowan Road Middle School. <laughs> Lisa Kirkland, Kennedy Road Middle School. Stephanie Pearl, Rehoboth Road Middle School. Nancy Kendrick, Griffin High School. And Christy Pritchard, Spalding High School. We would like to thank uh, these amazing individuals for their hard work and dedication to our exceptional students. I'm so sorry. I skipped over Miss Latasha Bryant Pearson, Jordan Hill Elementary. Very sorry. You should just come get your stuff anyway, even I didn't call your name. Sorry about that. All right. Congratulations to each one of you, and thank you for what you do. Next, Griffin Spalding School Board Association, excuse me, Georgia School Board Association, GSBA, Exemplary Award Recognition, Mr. Adam Pugh. All right, thank you. As I juggle here, let's see if we can get this where... We'll just roll with it. Sorry about that. I'm Adam Pugh. I'm Executive Director of Communication and Partnerships, and I'd like to share with you about a, a recent accolade. Uh, at the recent, just uh, last week, the GSBA Conference, which stands for Georgia School Board Association, the Griffin Spalding County Board of Education received recognition as an exemplary school board. This, uh, this recognition process was, uh, was set up to showcase best practices in leadership and board governance. It's a three-tier process. Uh, the lower tier is quality, the middle tier is distinguished, 
uh, and our board received the highest tier, which is exemplary. Uh, to do this, you have to complete 12 hours of training, complete a self-review and a review of the superintendent, utilize a thorough strategic plan, participate in Georgia Vision Project, uh, and participate with an exemplary committee for collaborative assessment of the board and the school system. Uh, so I'd like at this time uh, to thank the folks that served uh, on that exemplary committee. And if any are here, come up, and uh, many of them may not be here, and we'll get their certificate to them uh, if they're not. Uh, but I want to thank them for their time, their involvement, their influence. Uh, really appreciate their input. Uh, that's J.C. Barnes. Dr. John D. Barnes. Holly Brown. Tangela Booker-Williams. And Brittany Standifer. And then, of course, I'd also like to recognize our Board of Education. We've got a, a pretty trophy here that, that we'll take a photo with, if you guys will indulge us for that. But uh, that's R. Sintel Brown, Barbara Jo Cook, Will Doss, Mr. Zach Holmes, Chairman, and Sue McDonald, Vice Chair. Thank you, sir. All righty. We are at our public comment se segment. And uh, we, we are going to begin just handing out uh, the policy to, whoever, to, to whomever want to make comment but we'll do that beginning uh, next year. So uh, I'll just read some of the points. Hopefully uh, no one will need to hear them, but any individual <clears throat> desiring to speak is re requested to uh, give his or her name, address, and the group, if any, that he or she is uh, representing. The speaker should speak to the board, not the audience, the presentation should be brief, as brief as possible, yet should include all information considered important by the speaker unless an extension of time is granted. Each speaker shall not exceed three minutes. If one spokesperson has presented a matter, it is not necessary for others to repeat the same idea. Others speaking on the same subject shall usually be limited to one minute each. Questions, suggestions, proposals, or criticism which have been presented verbally should also be submitted when practical in writing and should be signed by the individual or the spokesperson for the group appearing before the board. Persons appearing before the board are reminded as a point of information that members of the board are without authority to act independently as individuals in official matters. With that being said, we have two uh, that have signed up, and we ask that you uh, approach the podium to my right, your left, and give us your name and address and what you're going to be speaking on. The first person is Christine Thomas. Can I hand you guys? Yes.
Thank you. My name is Christine Thomas, 400 North Rover Road. I'm from Stop CRT in Griffin. Um, I would like to uh, first remember Pearl Harbor today, 80 years since uh, true fascism reared its ugly head. Can you hear me? Um, first of all, I, want, I demand a formal apology in writing and orally from school attorney Timothy, Timothy Shepard of Smith, Welch, Webb, and White Law Firm in Griffin, Georgia. I expect this form of apology, both written and orally, no later than 30 days from this date. If any doubt is the truthfulness of my claims, uh, please see the video where he called me a lying idiot during the uh, millage rate increase. I, <laughs> I would also like the Board of Education to place on their January 4th agenda the following resolution. Um, whereas Griffin Spalding County parents and taxpayers have a vested united interest in providing all children with high quality nonpartisan academically focused education and whereas, whereas recent events and educational trends have distracted from this unifying community commitment and politicized the educational environment. And whereas the Griffin Spalding County Board of Education finds that it is in the best interest of students, parents and taxpayers to enact policies that seek to remove these barriers to education. And whereas the Griffin Spalding County Board of Education recognizes that the current laws of the state of Georgia do not fully address these concerns, therefore be it resolved that the Griffin Spalding County Board of Education will formally endorse the Georgia State Board of Education resolution denouncing critical race theory concepts in education dated June 3rd, 2021, and ensure all district materials are aligned to the tenets within it. And be it further resolved that the Griffin Spalding County Board of Education will extend the application of Georgia obscenity laws regarding minors as outlined at OCGA 16-12-100, OCGA 16-12-100.1, OCGA 16-12-100.2, and OCA 16-12-100.3 to include all excuse me, content in schools, including media centers, and be it further resolved that the Griffin Spalding County Board of Education will extend the application of, inf of parental informed consent for sexual education programs as stated in OCGA 20-2-143 and Georgia Board of Education Rule 160-4-2.12 to include all sexual materials and discussions provided and or facilitated by school faculty and or administrators administrators, and be it further resolved that the Griffin Spalding County Board of Education will uphold provisions of OCGA 19-7-2 requiring parents to provide for the maintenance, protection, and education of his or her child to include the medical decisions parents find best for fulfilling their legal obligations put forth by the statute. And be it further resolved that the Griffin Spalding County Board of Education will ensure all employees and faculty are held accountable to these standards in accordance with established dis district disciplinary procedures. I would like that on the January 4th agenda if that's possible. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. <clears throat> Next we have Chastity Nichols. Hi, Chastity Nichols, 102 St. Luke Drive. Thank you for allowing me to speak on behalf of my four children within this system. The CR cur curriculum is not being taught yet in our schools. However, I, as a white, privileged woman, think without uncertainty it should be. Allow me to present an alternate compromise. All this curriculum consists of is accurate information about American history. We are not able to go into the depth, the amount of, amount of struggle people of color have had to endure through an in order to be where they are today in one month within our school system during only Black History Month. This curriculum consists of facts, nothing more, nothing less. It is not telling any children who learn from it that they, any one race is better than the other, but is instead explaining how throughout history how one race treated the other simply because of the skin they were born into. If you're at all offended and do not want your children educated on life skills that matter, then that only further proves the agenda of racism. I, for one, know exactly what it's like to grow up in a home where you're told that you cannot date a boy because of the color of his skin, and you cannot hang out with a friend because she is mixed, and that people of color are all criminals. I was taken out of Kelsey Middle School despite the fact that I was an AB honor roll student, simply because it was primarily at that time consisting of black students, and then I was moved to a school where my grades began to drop due to extreme bullying. I know what it's like to have your first boyfriend who just so happened to be black and be so happy about him to then only be told you had to break up with him because he is a little different tone than you are. 
despite the fact that now he is an amazing basketball, basketball coach for one of the largest churches here in our community. If you don't think racism exists to this day, you're wrong. The discussion pages for this county and town are enough to prove that it is still ever present. Now onto the transphobic remarks made by other concerned citizens who were here during some of the last open comment meetings. Being gay is not a crime, being trans is not a crime, and being different is 100% okay. Also for clarification, regarding the presentation by the local anti-CRT group resolution to refocus academic education, taking away sexual education as they have proposed will only further discriminate against those that sexually identified outside of straight. It will also likely further increase unwanted pregnancies and also further risk sexual harassment within our schools. To sit up here and disrespect any person by purposely calling them by the pronouns they do not want to be called by is absolutely disheartening to say the least. So many of the people at this podium are telling you it's not going to end here. You're right, it's not and it shouldn't. We need to push for everyone to be accepted, loved, and able to learn empathy alongside their other curriculums. The LGBTQ community matters, the black community matters, and our children need to learn the history of this country accurately without sugarcoating or whitewashing one moment of that same history. Teach them exactly how it happened and teach them about how it is still happening. Ignoring that people who are different from you exist and we need to better understand why they sometimes feel the way they do is not going to make any of these issues go away. <sighs> I'm sorry. Children, more so now than ever, need to learn empathy. How is empathy going to be learned so they can properly be socialized with their peers, coworkers, and environments if we try to put a stop to the very thing that will teach them that? CRT is not the problem here. Racism is. It shouldn't have to happen to you for it to matter to you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. <clears throat> At this time, uh, we want to thank each and every one of you uh, for coming to be with us tonight. We don't take it lightly. Uh, we, we always uh, get joy out of seeing our constituents, and especially our students, uh, as we honor them uh, at our meeting. And uh, we just want to say have a Merry Christmas, and we hope you are safe and do not have any issues that you have to deal with. With that, we're going to take a five-minute break, and then we're going to reconvene. Thank you, and good night. How you doing, Mr. Brown? All right, ma'am. All right. Simmons. You told me to remind you to talk to Mr. Shepard. Okay. Let me use first one.
going to uh, resume my agenda, and we're going to ask for a motion uh, for our consent agenda items. Mr. Holmes, before we make that motion, I would uh, like, if we can, I was reading through policy BBE, which is in the uh, business action items 2A. Yes, sir. Uh, and just had a few more questions. My, my suggestion is maybe just uh, pulling that from the consent agenda uh, so that we can have some more discussion, maybe tabling it until the next meeting, um, if that's amendable. Yes, BB, BBE, school board attorney. Okay, uh, did everybody? If everybody's good, I, everybody I would make them. Everybody's good with that? His motion? That he want to pull a BBE and, uh, and, and uh, we discuss it before our next meeting. That's okay? That's, that's your motion, right, Mr. Dawson? So moved. So moved. All in favor? 5-0. All right. Next on the agenda, we have our action items. So and uh, Ms. Mr. Chair, I didn't, was that to remove it from the consent, um, yeah, yeah, and so yeah, then that, I would that, then make, a, on, yeah, make a motion for the consent agenda right, at this time. Right, okay. Let, let us vote on the consent agenda items now. Can we get a motion to accept it with the changes? So moved. Second. All right. All in favor? Thank you, Mr. Dawes. Next, we are going to uh, have our action items by myself, uh, and we have our strategic planning strategy map and vision mission and belief we have dr donna warren slated to present good evening um board good Mr. evening simmons superintendent and members of audience I'm here to present to you this evening um, a combination of a lot of hard work, healthy debate and dialogue with each other and the community members, and that is our new five-year uh, strategic plan. Typically, when we um, present, we will have our vision, mission, and beliefs here in our current strategy map, but being that we're going to propose new ones tonight, they're not on our, my PowerPoint to you. However, I do want to reference our non-negotiables, acronym PACE, for us to always be professional, accountable, and communicate effectively. Also, our pyramid up there, <clears throat> we are um, keenly aware that an individual's experiences will um, inform their beliefs, which in turn will impact their actions and as well as their results. This next slide, um, of a true partnership between three organizations that work hand in hand to complete this task. That's um, our school system um, and community members of Griffin Spalding County Schools, um, the representatives from the Georgia School Boards Association, Dr. Barker and Ms. Lenita Jackson, and also representatives from Glissy, which is an acronym for the Georgia Leadership Institute for School Improvement, and that will be Dr. Barker and um, Dr. Welch, true partnership. How did we get here? Well, this development process actually started about a year ago, right before I took over as interim superintendent. Um, so I just want to give you a, a summary of, of the work and things accomplished thus far. Uh, it was about this time last year where we embarked upon approving a contract with GSBA to facilitate this process. And, and they support school districts throughout the state um, in planning. They did um, a wonderful job assist, assisting us. Uh, next, there was a partnership meeting. This meeting um, took place between district personnel um, as well as GSBA officials to sort of lay out the activities and events that would be used to develop our improvement plan. Next. Age 40 plus um, various community representatives to review data and provide their thoughts and feedback on how things are going for our school district. Um, we didn't just stop at those 40 plus individuals that are community leaders. We also developed, a GSB developed an online survey 
that was sent out to all of our stakeholders to provide input. And we had 539 individuals to respond to that online survey, 539, which, which according to the GSB official was a pretty good number, pretty good number. Next, we continue with having a series of meetings. Again, continue. on May 27th, and the planning team was facilitated by GSBA It consisted of both district and community representation. On our school district. Uh, what to review, as well as refine our mission, vision, and beliefs, and develop major, major strategic goal areas and performance objectives of our plan. Next, we had our action team meetings. In the action team meeting, we put the meat on the bone, so to speak. They were also facilitated by the representatives from Glissy, and they consisted of district representatives that reviewed public survey data, SWOT analysis, and a plethora of other data points for our school district. Um, in these meetings, our goal areas and our performance initiatives and objectives as well as develop performance measures that indicate, that indicate success towards goals. Um, this part of the work was presented to you, I want to say back in August at a, at a retreat that you had. Finally, go back down please. Finally, strategy map to those community members And they're like, November 10th, where we invited those 40 individuals to come back. And that meeting was held virtually, and it was facilitated by the GSBA officials. So, without further ado, let's take a look at our vision, mission, and beliefs and strategy map. Our new vision is for GSCS to have a distinctive brand, strong leaders, and great schools. This is our why. When you think of a vision, um, you think about successful in achieving our mission. This is a public declaration, so it's the mission. Uh, you think about Brandy, you think about Chick-fil-A. They're known for excellent customer service, high quality food. That's the kind of brand we want to have in our school district, okay? Mission. Our mission indicates how we make a vision a reality. It's used to describe our founding purposes and our major organization commitments. It's what we do and why we do it. It describes our day-to-day -day operational activities and objectives. And again, it's a public commitment to our students and the community here in Griffin Spalding. Our mission is to, is to empower each student to graduate college and career ready. Um, that mission statement may look familiar to you. However, we added the word each to it to focus on each student as an individual, okay? Next, we have um, four goal areas. Um, the first two are student achievement and family and community engagement. And for each goal area, we developed um, belief statements. These represent the core values of GSCS. They'll be, they'll be demonstrated in our everyday decision making as well as our actions. They reflect what's truly, truly important to us. So our belief statement on student achievement, we believe that promoting educational equity will advance academic achievement and support a well-rounded education for each student, empowering them to graduate ready to choose college or career. As you can see, our mission is actually embedded in that belief statement, okay? Family and community engagement. We believe that cultivating collaborative engagement with families and community will build and sustain positive relationships that lead to student success. Our next two goal areas, high performing staff and organizational and operational efficiency. We believe that investing in the growth of our employees will produce a high performing and enduring staff who believe, who build a positive relationship with students. The word enduring staff, um, that's, a, that's, a, that's symbolic of our having people come back to work with us year after year after year, enduring staff. Therefore, we can invest in them, we can build them up, and our students can benefit from them being 
and Griffin Spalding School District over the long haul. Organizational and operational efficiency. Uh, no one likes disorganization or chaos. We believe that our providing effective organizational structures and efficient operations will support the growth and retention of high quality staff and excellent learning experiences for each student. They, you again, you see that word, each student, focusing on the individual. So those are our four belief statements. Next, I want to share with you our strategy map. You take, if you just think about this, those green boxes on the far right-hand side, they represent um, the goal areas, the four big buckets, so to speak. And our goal area champions, and this was accomplished by um, a lot of people, internal people, uh, school level, district level, certified, classified, as well as our community representatives. Um, each of those green boxes is a goal area. I want to take a minute to give a shout out to the goal area champions, the leaders of those um, particular teams that developed the blue box that I get to shortly. First of all, uh, we'll call your name, please stand. Organizational and operational effectiveness, that was set up by Dr. Norman Sauce. High-performing staff was set up by Dr. Stephanie Evans. Family and community engagement by Mr. Adam Pugh. And student achievement by Dr. Tiffany Taylor and a plethora of others that are not with us tonight. So please join me in giving these individuals a round. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now get into those blue boxes. Those blue, block, blue boxes represent performance initiatives so as I walk you through this, I want you to think sort of in a linear format, like starting from left to right. Um, think like if then, if I do X, then what happens? Think if then statements. Uh, but again, as you also look at this strategy map, please know that all of our work, all the work involved in those blue boxes, it's all interrelated or intertwined, okay? So starting at the bottom there. operations and present safe and supportive learning environments that will result in organizational and operational efficiency. Next, if we can attract quality candidates and support effective professional learning and growth as well as cultivate a committed workforce that will result in high performing staff. Next, if we can leverage business and community partnerships and provide proactive communication of information. I love that word, proactive. And if we can address the needs of students, families in the community will be engaged. Finally, at the top, if we can implement a coherent and viable curriculum and provide engaging and high quality instruction and prepare college and career ready graduates, that will result in student achievement. So that's an explanation of our strategy. Again, linear, but all intertwined, interrelated, just like this, okay? Our next steps, um, we get this approved tonight, is to go on a massive public relations campaign to inform both our internal as well as our external stakeholders of our new plan. Also, moving forward next school year, will be aligned with our strategic plan. That strategy map that you just saw up there, those activities, objectives aligned to each blue box that leads to that green box. So it's structured from top down, okay? Um, next. I want you to know that the implementation of this work will start now throughout our spring semester through budgeting and the whatnot making plans with full implementation to start in the fall of this school year. And that, that fall implementation will be based on data collected from this school year, okay? So having said all that, um, it is recommended that our board Board members, you've heard from Dr. Warren, are there any questions? Questions, uh, Mr. Leader. Mr. Dr. Warren, can you, I guess, just give us an update on the feedback from 
parents that were involved in this process on the roundtable discussions or the, the different groups that were met with? I don't have that in front of me right now, to be honest with you. Um, some of the feedback was an increase in getting more parents and students involved, schools working hand in hand, um, a need to increase academic outcomes, that was one of them. Also, um, from reviewing the data, um, a need to address um, disciplinary data, and which we hope implementing and being more, um, implementing PBS in, in particular with more fidelity will support that. Okay. Also, we've um, taken several steps in the area of uh, mental health to provide support to our students. That's needed as well. And then also in the, the public relations campaign, and maybe getting with Adam on this, okay. how will scholars be involved in that process? Because when we think about it, when we look at student achievement, family mm -hmm. engagement, mm -hmm. um, operational organization, everything ties back to the student, mm -hmm. to the scholar. And so how would they be involved in the process of sharing information, whether we're using student government associations at a high school level or key club or interact club, how do you see them being involved in this process? Yes, sir. Let, let me, Mr. Brown. <clears throat> yes, sir. You, you may have heard me, board members talk about, or you may have heard Mr. Pugh talk about this partnership with Slices Pizza. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we're excited about, believe it or not, is that this particular strategy map, we see it as a road map. And in many ways, this roadmap um, is connected to everyone in, in the district. So as I have principals to my right, they play a role in each of these objectives and goal areas. Students will play a role in each objective and goal area. Parents will play a role. The district will play a role. The classroom will play a, play a role. This week and next week, I'll be at both high schools this semester offering pizza hearing from students about what's working well relative to student achievement, what's working well relative to having an inclusive, safe, and um, inviting campus, what's working re well relative to instructional practices, curricular offerings, extracurricular offerings. We'll do that with the secondary level students. Primary grade level students probably are more interested in the pizza than talking to me about what we're teaching and so on and so forth. But, I offer that because in many ways, what I want you to take away from this particular slide, each one of those blue boxes are interrelated. You can take, mm -hmm. attract quality candidates and apply it to organizational operational efficiency. You can apply it to family community engagement. You can apply it to student achievement. You can take, implement a coherent and viable curriculum and engage the family and community in that space engage operational and financial efficiency in that space. And so each of these blue boxes, we're going to go on the road, help students understand their role and their benefit, help parents understand their role and their benefit, ensure that our staff understand its role, understanding that this campus plays a role, each classroom plays a role. I'll be honest with you, if you haven't figured out, I'm excited about this opportunity. I see this as a road map recognizing that when you journey, there are pit stops along the way, there are waypoints along the way, but there's a destination that you're excited to get to. And as long as we stay on that destination, we're gonna be successful in Griffin Spa. So I appreciate that question. Uh, I was probably better suited than Dr. Warren to answer it, but I took it as a personal point of privilege to share with you my <laughs> excitement about this strategy map. All right. And then I guess the, the last question that I would like to know is that as we continue to address the diverse needs of our scholars, will we be able to, in our strategic plan, will we be able to talk about some of the things that our, our schools are doing? I know some of our schools, like Rehoboth Road Middle School, is doing houses. Mm -hmm. So would that be included? Because those addresses those needs as well in a, in a more smaller environment versus being in a larger classroom setting. So I just want to be able to, to, to capture all of the wonderful things that we're doing here in our district so that it speaks to, like you said, it's, everything is interrelated. So we should be able to speak to all of those all of those blue boxes as it helps with our green boxes. Correct. So in that regard, knowing that the middle schools, at least the two that are at the top of my head, uh, have an interest in, in Beaverbrook in, does houses as well, right? And so if if that's their space, if that's their space, then what we need to be able to do, as it says in the far left on the bottom, is align resources to support what's happening for students and staff. 
what we need to be able to do is provide professional learning so that staff understands the reasoning behind the houses. And if we do those things, if we implement those houses with fidelity, the outcomes that we can expect. In many ways, what we're striving to get to is a district strategic plan that encompasses 18 school plans mm -hmm. so that we're all moving forward. I can't really afford to have one or two schools off to the right or left and expect the district to be successful, nor can I expect schools to be successful if the district is not aware of what their efforts and their needs are. So we're, we're excited about this. It starts with students. It ends with students. It's about students, and it's for students. No further questions? And I will also add, um, I was just in a meeting with some high school principals today in which we talked about um, using some students from the, the different high schools to uh, advertise and publicize an event that's going to be happening, uh, which I'll let it cut out the bag. We're going to have prom this year. We're going to use them to uh, help us advertise that. Okay? okay. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Warren, good to see you, number one. Yes, ma'am. As a third year board member, I just want to be sure because we, we are, I know that Centel and I are used to seeing the red boxes, the yellow boxes, and the green boxes as through the the year the strategic plan was presented to us where we are, where yes, we need to be by the end of blah, blah, blah. Remember when Dr. Kennedy would do that? Yes, yes. Or Ms. Jones? Yes. If I understand correctly, based on the next steps moving forward for the next school year, so in other words, every school using this tool will have their own strategic plan, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, every school. Under one big umbrella. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so the next time I see red, yellow, green, it may just be for Rehoboth Road or Kennedy Road or Cowan Road Elementary. It won't be just blanket system. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, we will we'll have a, a district summary, but with each school um, feeding into that strategy map with their individual school improvement plans, they will have um, initiatives, they will have objectives under those performance initiatives, which are the blue boxes. So yes, ma'am. Um, I can add on, Dr. Till I can say this, schools will be in, up, uploading their improvement plans in assembly. Mm -hmm. And through the use of the balanced scorecard, it will be color coded red, yellow, green. Okay. And to, to Ms. McDonald's mm -hmm. point, when you were talking about the progress of red, yellow, green, mm -hmm. uh, Superintendent Simmons is going to explain to you how they're going to monitor the progress of the blue boxes. Mm -hmm. okay. So Ms. McDonald, the, the red, yellow, and blue boxes for me speaks to the scorecard. Mm -hmm. um, and in many ways, Dr. Warren referenced these as initi initiatives. Uh, we see them as objectives, and in these objectives, the initiatives live. What I think you're talking about is our effort to monitor our progress and Correct. performance in this regard. Correct. So take attracting quality candidates. Uh, Dr. Stephanie Evans and her team, uh, with, along with Ms. Judy Battle uh, and, and HR proper, we will have analytics and metrics that talk about whether or not we're, one, attracting the number of quality of candidates, the level of quality of candidates, ensuring that all of our students have access to those quality candidates, and then making sure that that objective leads to high performance in every classroom. So for me, it's about ensuring that we have a clear vision relative to the needs of students. Sure. This is not about what we want at Taylor Street or what a school wants proper. This is about identifying learning outcomes or lack thereof and addressing them. I can't stress to you enough, each blue box can, can be connected to any of the green boxes. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if we're going to drive student achievement, we have to have good people in front of them. Sure. We then have to ensure that they have access to quality professional learning, whether it be to improve upon student outcomes or just build solid relationships so that discipline data uh, doesn't look so chaotic. That, that's the plan. I think what Dr. Warren is talking about is being able to create quarterly measures so that we can ensure that we're moving in the right direction at the right pace. Okay, thank you. And this would be, if I heard you correctly, this would be implemented, the new five-year strategic plan would be ready for next fall, is that correct? The next, the next academic year? Yes. Is that correct? Okay, mm -hmm. great, awesome. Okay. But again, foundational work will be start, has started and will continue to start as we um, budget and plan for next school year. 
Well, I, I think all of you know that I'm, I'm all about autonomy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we hire great leaders. Let them lead. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, lastly, I just want to say, probably four months ago, we were in the, the old boardroom, and we sat down, and Dr. Warren presented this. And when I looked at the We Believe statement, uh, student achievement, family community engagement, high-performing staff, I was able to see all of the comments from board members that made suggestions. And that makes the difference. That makes the difference. And so I just want to say to Dr. Warren and to Mr. Simmons, thank you so much for listening to the board and giving us a a voice in this process. Um, So at, at the end of the day, we're all here in service of kids. Whether you are a governance member, whether you are an auntie, a cousin across the street, the neighbor at the corner store, I do believe that your core, you want what's best for students. This is an opportunity for us to articulate and depict the direction that we will take in order to make those things happen. As I said, you will have a role to play. I will make sure that you understand as a governance team, what does it mean for you to help us attract quality candidates? What does it mean for you to help us cultivate a committed workforce? What's your role in that? What's the teacher's role in that? What's the custodian's role in that? What's the parent's role in that? This is an all-encompassing effort. I can can hear people saying, are we there yet? But those are less likely when they know where we're going. I'll say it again. When people know where they're going, they're less likely to ask, are we there yet? Correct. They're more likely to take uh, advantage of what they see along the way. Okay. Glad to do it. Okay. All right. Um, I, I made a recommendation, so I guess now we need, need uh, proof. You'd be so generous yes, sir. to oblige us. Mr. Leader, I wholeheartedly would like to make a motion to accept this five year strategic plan. Motion. Can we get a, get a second? Second. Motion and a second. How did I know you were going to say? <laughs> All in favor? Raise your right hand. All right. All right, 5-0. All right. Thank you all for trusting us to get this done. Yes. Thank you. All right, Dr. Warren. You'd Thank like you, Dr. Warren. You the man, so we'll continue with uh, the school calendar for 22-23. Yeah, I'm stuck with me for another two presentations. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, I want to present to you um, calendars for the school year of 2022-23 as well as 2023-24. First of all, I want to walk you through um, a process to see how these um, calendars were developed. Um, A small group of two or three people didn't go in a dark room and close the door and come out and proclaim these are the calendars we're going to use. We had a pretty um, intensive, um, inclusive process, we believe, um, that led us to um, two great options for the next school year. Um, There was only one person that had really served and led this process um, over the last couple of years. That's Ms. Uh, Melvina Crawl. I want to give a shout out to her for her um, guidance and assistance along the way. Very instrumental. It was my assistant, um, Ms. Sharon Monero. Just just give some background again. There was a lead committee that met to review um, past parameters in terms of calendar development. And um, that lead group developed um, four options, an A and a B for 2022-23, and an A and a B for 23-24. Uh, we didn't stop there. Next, um, I assembled a, a school calling task force that was made up of our three principals, uh, one elementary, one middle, one high school, that serve on our, um, our full cabinet. Um, then we'll leave out teachers, we included six teachers um, two elementary, two middle school, two high school. I just talked to a couple of principals, give me a name. <laughs> and and I, I just reached out to them, and they gladly obliged, and, and they came. We also included um, several department heads, coordinators, as well as classified uh, employees. Um, when I sent out the information to them, um, once they agreed to serve on the task force, uh, they reviewed the parameters. And they reviewed all four drafts, and I told them I need, to ha- I need for you to do this in, in strict confidence. I don't want to create uh, miscommunication or confusion by these being out on the Griffin Native News on the Griffin Spalding discussion page saying this is it and it's not it. <laughs> so 
So they all gave me the word that they would do that. So once they did, I emailed them the parameters and the four drafts on a Friday afternoon, and I gave them five days to the following Wednesday um, where we met in person. Now, in that five-day period, I asked them to do a couple things. I asked them to um, review the calendars, the parameters, and to develop a list of their, their feedback, their considerations for blind spots, their ideas or suggestions to enhance all four drafts. It's all about product uh, enhancement. When they input their blind spots uh, for things that we, not, we, we, we did not consider as much, it may not seem like a big deal to us, but to them, at their particular um, job function, be it school building or classified, it is a big deal. So um, for the most part, we, are, we were able to uh, accommodate their desires. So um, that following Wednesday, the lead committee and the school calendar task force, we actually met in person. And we used a, a, a protocol called a modified tuning protocol to discuss in a structured manner um, the feedback ideas, suggestions, and blind spots to tweet the calendars. So they gave us warm, which is considered positive feedback on all four drafts, and they gave us um, cool, which is considered negative feedback as well from the, um, the drafts. Uh, next, um, each group um, had a representative, and we went over all the cool feedback, all the warm feedback. So. Um, that was the work of that, of that task force. Next, the, the lead committee got together um, and we developed a response to all of their suggestions. And I will tell you that um, the majority of the input um, that they suggested was able to be implemented to enhance the calendars. And we gave the task force members a, a written summary of their input and how it was used and applied to the calendar so they know that their work was not in vain. It was very, very transparent, clear process, okay? Um, once we um, tweaked and enhanced all four drafts, we developed a Google Forum survey and worked with Mr. Pugh in this department. We um, emailed via link to all GSES employees and all households represented in our school district via parent link as well as we um, leveraged our social media, and we leveraged our district and school web pages. Um, we asked for um, a collection of feedback and It was not a, a vote. It was just to um, give us an idea of a blind spot that we missed so that we can enhance these calendars. So um, that survey was actually open um, from November 19th until November 30th. So they had um, about a week and a half to, to review those um, four calendars and the drafts. It was the four calendars, and it was at a glance to compare each one of them. So it's like four or five documents. Um, once the survey closed, the lead committee got back together, and we reviewed the results. There were actually 209 uh, individuals that submitted feedback um, and gave us things to consider. And I will tell you that their input led to our selecting calendars that we feel align with the desires of our community as well as our employees. And I'm gonna highlight that in just a minute. Um, which those two calendars I'm gonna recommend to you tonight for approval and adoption. I wanna share with you some of the recurrent themes that was loud and clear from their feedback. They want full weeks of fall break and winter break. That was five days not two days or three days. They want a, a full Monday through Friday, and that's mission accomplished. Um, yes. <laughs> sir? Yes, yes, sir. We got four um, five-day week for fall and winter breaks in both of these calendars, Monday through Friday. Um, they had a concern about the placement of professional learning and planning days. Um, the teachers on the, that won the um, task force shared with us, hey, it, when school starts, the beginning of the school year, or when school starts back up in January, we have like a teacher planning day, professional learning day. Teachers said, we want to have that day before kids come back in our classrooms and our buildings to do whatever we need to do to prepare to receive kids. So we made those days green, which are planning days, where teachers remain in building and not red professional learning days. So that's mission accomplished. Um, they wanted to allow for more time at the open house 
to prepare for the first day of school for school personnel as well as transportation. Uh, Mr. Harris and his folks, they have a, a monumental task of um, getting bus routes right to accommodate our students and parents and whatnot. So that, that was um, mission accomplished. It may lead to um, perhaps open house being on a day other than Thursday, not on a Wednesday, but maybe on a Tuesday. So there's, there's some flexibility in the calendars there, okay? There's some flexibility. Um, some of the highlights from these calendars as follows, and again, they're in, in assembly, and you received them um, last week, I believe it was. Some of the highlights, principals, we have more instructional days. We have two more uh, in the 22-23 school year, and one additional day in the 23-24 school year. Uh, when it comes to teacher planning days, again, I mentioned this earlier, teachers will have planning days in their classrooms, in the buildings, right before students return in um, first day of school in January. No 10-hour work days. That's a thing in the past. No more 10-hour work days. Um, again, full week for fall and winter breaks as well as Thanksgiving. Um, both calendars maintain the 10 days off for Christmas break. Some of them, I, believe, I think both of them, actually allow them, uh, a day or two longer after the new year begins, after the, the, the January 1st. Also, very, very important, in both of these school calendars, the last day of school occurs on a Friday, which allows a return to our traditional Friday evening and Saturday morning graduation ceremonies for Griffin, Spalding, and ACK. So I won't be dealing with um, things in the, during the week in the future. So um, having said that, it is recommended that Griffin, Spalding, and Board of Education approve these two calendars for our next two school years, 2022-23, as well as 2023 through 24. And any questions that I can address? Did we get a copy of that? Slide up some. Yeah. I'm just so thankful for no 10 hour days. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And to allow our teachers to have some time before children come back because it is so needed. Mm -hmm. It is so needed so you can get your, all your ducks in a row. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a balance be be between providing them the, the PL they need and arranging, you know, our coordinators, and sometimes we have um, representatives from different companies come in, provide that. However, um, we were able to get it done, and they, the teachers um, brought some valuable insight. That's one nugget. Todd brought a, a valuable nugget to the table. Hey, Dr. Warren, we need more time between open house and uh, first day of school to get our, our rods correct. So we think that these two calendars are, are winners. They're winners. Okay, so recommend it that you all approve the the calendars, if you so desire. So moved. Okay. Second. All right, thank you. All right, have um, a last presentation for you. Um, the Glimpse K-12, Mr. Harper. Thank you. Um, the, the memo, there should be a memo in there. Yes. Um, the district is seeking approval to purchase an annual subscription from the company um, Glimpse K-12. I think you all are familiar with this. Um, we're seeking a solution that provides the ability to identify what's working best in serving our students to increase their achievement, as well as helping to optimize those implementation with the focus we get a bang for our buck out of our, our, our dollar that we spend on educational programs and things of that nature. Um, Glimpse K-12 provides a platform and services to effectively measure the educational return on investment. You probably hear that a lot, you know, what's the, what's the ROI? What's the return on investment? What kind of um, bang we're getting for our buck, you know? What kind of return on investment we're getting um, when it comes to everything we purchase? 
plat um, software programs, platforms we invest in, things of that nature. So this data is used to, again, to help optimize spending, uh, run the resources that directly show a positive impact on student achievement. If we're spending money in it and the, um, the, the outcome is not good or not as we so desire, we can stop purchasing it. Okay? If it is, then we can um, spread it around other schools in the district. Um, this company, Glimpse K-12, they will provide guidance for identifying the most effective resources for accelerating instructional time and programs, as well as supporting budgetary um, decisions. I did a little homework to see uh, whether the districts in our, in our state use this system, and I can tell you that um, Blackie County down in Cochran, Georgia uses it. Um, the superintendent is one of the gurus of, um, of school finance. Uh, Putnam County, Crawford County, Troop County, as well as next door in Kaida County. Okay? So it is recommended that our board authorize the superintendent to purchase an annual subscription of EROI analytics from Glimpse K-12 in the amount not to exceed $49,875. Before so. we have a motion and vote, I just wanted our stakeholders to, to know that the mm -hmm. great thing about this governance team going to the Georgia School Board Association is we get to meet these people. Yes, ma'am. And we met Miss Williams, mm -hmm. and we get to speak to her, and we get to ask her any number of questions. And um, she was impressive with mm -hmm. the product that they bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted our stakeholders to understand that this is just not something that, you know, Mr. Simmons just happened to, it fell out of the sky. There's been a <laughs> lot of research with regard to us mm -hmm. purchasing this. So mm -hmm. yeah. motion. To approve. Yes, sir. I'll second. All right. This is something that in, in private sector. Uh, people often do, mm -hmm. and, and it can be, uh, and most often it's a it's a cost saving mm -hmm. uh, because you'll be surprised uh, how many things we do with good intent. Yes, we put in place with good intent, but we don't get a return on it. So uh, you know, I was sold when I first met the representative and just heard the heard the idea because it wasn't anything new for me coming from a major healthcare uh, mm -hmm. company. So mm -hmm. I, I appreciate seeing this matriculating into the education uh, arena. Yes, sir, you're exactly right. Um, you know, the, the future is analytics and using data to drive um, decision making. And um, it's sort of hard to exactly nail down how the money is impacting student achievement in a lot of regards. I recall my former um, position in, in Henry County as director of teaching and learning. We tried to do this, we tried to do it locally, and um, didn't do quite a good a job. I, I don't think this company, if it was around, we didn't know about it. Um, but it's nice to have a company that's just, just their sole function. And they, they do it and do it well. They, they come highly recommend it. So thank you for your support and thank you for your approval. And just for, for your FYI, I don't know mm -hmm. if you heard, you probably have, but for anyone that hasn't, uh, we we had a great presentation from the superintendent from Blakely uh, mm -hmm. County on finance. Yes. Uh, it, while we were there, but unfortunately, uh, their chairperson uh, of their board, uh, you know, they came to that de demise mm -hmm. during the conference. So. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, yes, sir. So mm -hmm. um, that that was unfortunate, but mm -hmm. uh, that did occur right after wow. he gave he gave that finance report. Yes, yeah, I know Mr. Smith. He's a good man, and um, I had a class with him in my program a couple years ago, yeah. finance class. All right, thank you all. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right. Okay, next uh, we have a presentation and discussion on our finance report for October, Mr. Byron Jones. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, uh, <laughs> I want to gather the superintendent down for mentioning the Tampa Bay. <laughs> and why was that right before I got up? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Board of Education members. Good to see you again. Uh, I'm going to be a little briefer. I'm going to try to wrap this presentation up for us this evening. Um, just to remind you on how we're reporting to you now, we're giving you, uh, Ms. Ray's giving you a full packet of what you're used to seeing in paper form. We've shortened you to a six page version on the screen and that's what I'll focus on tonight. You still have the notes on the narrative stuff that I write up for you every minute. I'll refer to a few of those as we go through. So the first page is, is our balance sheet. I'm gonna make a couple of comments, again, focusing on the yellow, which is the kind of the tax money, state money pot for you. Uh, reserve right now 27 million obviously that'll start decreasing uh, the main reason for that is the tax revenues in the county uh, are normally due November 15th and you all know with our millage adoption and the tax bills going out the taxpayers have 60 days from the receipt of those bills to pay the taxes I actually just talked to Miss Hollums probably 530 before I come over here um, and she's telling me that the the uh, due date on the bills is 1231, mm -hmm. which is not technically 60 days. It's really going to be January 15th, but she's not charging a late fee until January 15th. Oh. And and I asked her, she was fine for me to repeat that in public forum. So just wanted you to know that. That's important to you to know because on our cash, on our assets there, where it says 19 million, the top number on the left, that'll start dwindling um based on what i just told you uh she has assured me that she um, will give us some money before we pay payroll next week and i just want to publicly say that sylvia has really worked with me she uh, texted me and called me too when i was in the hospital too so she's really worked with us and i appreciate her sincerity on always understanding the needs of the, the school district and paying our folks before we go home for the holidays so i just wanted to say that um Again, reading from right, uh, left to right, <clears throat> I want to just focus on special revenue fund. You see a negative on cash at the top as well. That's because we kind of pre-fund some of the grant payments until those D to the Department of Education approves the state and federal grants. So most of those are getting approved. CARES 3 is one that's still in the hopper to officially receive approval, but Ms. Austin has that pretty well in the works. That should be going off here in the next few days. Uh, going to the sec page two, uh, I will focus on, this is a revised version, uh, based on Superintendent and I having a discussion uh, while you are, all were at GSBA um, on one of Mr. Smith's, uh, Steve Smith's presentations, and I've met him, he's come to Gasbo, and I've met him a couple of times as well. We added an encumbrance column on to this uh, version, it's the third from the right, so that's new, uh, and so you'll see now, you see $1.5 million worth of additional encumbrances that you normally didn't see on the report. And if, if you're not familiar with encumbrance, it just means that the uh, designees of the superintendent have uh, put a purchase order out there for certain expenditures, which encumbers the budget, which basically ensures we're not going over in certain categories as a safeguard. So you'll hear me talk more about that in the future. We're gonna continue to revise our financial package too. This was a, a quick way to get this in front of you to see that we've got compliance going on here. So you'll see that in the future on the uh, general fund financial statement. Year to date column going to the bottom, 1.7 million to the good right now. Again, that will start being better as the uh, tax revenues come in. Page three is just a summary of your special revenue funds, your grant funds. Another item superintendent and I talked about was giving you potentially a, a, a different looking snapshot of all funds on a fund level. This is the same thing maybe that you saw in the presentation from Mr. Smith, but more in a detail or functional uh, way of looking at it. We may revise this sheet to show you more of a fund level. So again, just be patient as we revise our package going forward. But this shows you uh, the non-general funds. Over on page four, we've got nutrition. <clears throat> again, I uh, just want to I guess shout out Mr. Wheeler, you know, and I and the superintendent supporting and recommending to you all going to the, the CEP provision for the next few years. We're under the waiver this year and you can see that uh, the way that the revenue counts are coming in. I mean, this is real time through October. We're already, we're to the good. I mean, you know, last year we were struggling and that reserve went from 1.2 million down to zero. Uh, so this is good news for nutrition. Um, page five is just your investment register. Uh, again, some of our restricted funds, the non-100 funds, you'll see the total amount of funds that we have tied up with the state investment pool is close to $35 million. 
And then the last page would be our splost expenditures. I mean, again, a million thirty-five thousand. It just keeps on coming in. Uh, we'll be right back on January fourth, giving you a November financial, and it's going to show a million twenty-one. So we just refuse to go under a million on our splost. It seems like here for a good for most of my tenure here. So um, uh, before I close up, I, I think I mentioned this a year ago to y'all. Uh, it's an honor for you all to be exemplary. I think I told you a year ago, I used to go to the, the GSBA conferences with, with some of the boards. None of them were ever exemplary. They're great folks, but you know, you have the three designations and I know what it takes to have to do that extra work to get to that. So it's a lot. The superintendent knows it's a lot too. So uh, it helps us for you to know more and then the finance side too. So when we bring in you stuff about millage, stuff go back in the retreat last year where some of you said you'd not seen that material before, we're gonna continue to do that. So you'll, we want to make make it easy for you to say yes when we're bringing this stuff to you. So any questions? This just, is through October. I just October. want to say thank you, Mr. Jones, because I <coughs> mentioned to the superintendent more than once that the millage help was was priceless to me as a fairly new board member because we had never been schooled in that manner before. And secondly, when we adopted the new budget, the information that you and Mr. Simmons provided to this board was incredible. So I just wanted to publicly say thank you to you and, and your group and providing us with what we need to, to do our job. So thank you. And I also let you know, uh, Mr. Smith, that gave that presentation, uh, they did touch on that old dreaded uh, amount of money that we pay the county to collect. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so I guess we're not the only one uh, in, in that dilemma of trying to yeah. address that. And I personally, uh, I'm like Mr. Shepard. You know, I always say he's like a bulldog. He grab hold on something. He don't let it go. And uh, I'm just still on that. I feel like the county uh, can do something as far as alleviating what they charge us to collect what they're already collecting. Uh, and, and I look forward to us addressing that with, with the new county manager, uh, Mr. Ledbetter. Thank you, Mr. Right, thank you. Mr. Mr. Jones, and uh, we appreciate that. Uh, board members, you, uh, uh, you see the rest of your information items in your package. Mr. Superintendent, do we have anything for executive session? No, sir. Mr. Oh, thank you, G. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what did he say? What'd you say? I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, board members. Uh, uh, we'll start to my left and allow any comments uh, from the board. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I um, want to say thank you to everyone that is in this room that is working within this system and the hard work you're doing you have holidays coming up and I hope that you are getting prepared and ready at the GSBA conference a um, couple of enlightening things for myself maybe you knew this already because you are the professionals and I didn't um, but the statement that is now being said is five weeks of a student not reading can lose a grade level of reading that's pretty phenomenal. And I know that the emphasis at the conference was on, on that reading. And so I'm excited. Uh, I began, I have been a part of the, um, the first foundation and it here in town and getting reestablished. And so I made a couple of texts and found out not only are we already partnering with them, but we have someone that is going to be sitting on their board. And so uh, through our zero to five initiative, uh, I know I was talking with Mr. Um, uh, Simmons at the conference and there were some things that were going up there that were getting some awards from different counties and different things and uh, we do not toot our own horn enough we are already doing some things our zero to five initiatives and some things that many other counties are just even beginning to embark on that we're doing well so I just want to say thank you and I appreciate you <coughs> I also wanted to say thank you, and, and I was so um, happy to, number one, when we went to Atlanta last week for the Georgia School Board Association conference, I was so glad to be back in person. 
because I, I, I'm a hands-on kind of learner, but the literacy and reading aspect of the information that was given to us was incredible. I didn't know that either, that a child could lose that much uh, reading level information if, if he or she is not reading, especially during the summer. So while we're sitting there listening to one of the speakers from, I believe, up north somewhere, <laughs> I'm looking up how we can get us a book bus in the summer to uh, go around to all of our neighborhoods that, are, that, we, that we serve and have a book bus. Bullock, uh, Bullock County has one. We're going to I still think that this system and in, in in the county and the city need grant writers. The Bullock County book bus was, was a, a grant. Um, I believe that all three of these entities can, can do well by having a grant writer. Grant writers are, it, that's hard work. That, that's, a, uh, that's a skill that I certainly don't have. But um, I've already spoken to Holly Brown out at Carver Road. Her, her energy is incredible. And uh, she wants to help me get us a book bus, and we're gonna, I'm going to talk to her next week. But again, we also had the opportunity to listen to Malcolm Mitchell, played football at the University of Georgia, went on to win a Super Bowl ring with the New England Patriots under Tom Brady at that point in time. He spoke to us that morning that we left, and he is a, he is a product of not growing up in a home where reading was important. And when you actually hear that from someone and know that where he is today, when he went to the University of Georgia to play football, I think he said he had an eighth or ninth grade reading level, and he knew that he needed to be a better reader. So he started going to book club meetings of all women in Athens, and he became a better reader. And look what he's done for our children today all over this country as far as reading with Malcolm. So I encourage all of the leaders in the room to go to his web page. You probably have already been there. A lot of resources there. And I have some resources that I also were given that I want to share with, with the leaders in the room too. But it's, reading is important. And our goal is that our third graders will be able to read. So I hope that we can, we can meet those goals. Thank you all. Have a great Christmas. Have a great holiday. And, and get some downtime. Thank you. Thanks for y'all's <clears throat> comments. Uh, I want to thank this board for what they've done to uh, qualify for exemplary board. I think that's outstanding, and I speak a long time coming, and I think it speaks volumes for where we are at this point. So I congratulate each one of you for your part in doing that. Thank you. Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Leader. <laughs> found this quote, literacy is the road to human progress and the means through which every man, woman, and child can realize his or her full potential. That is so true. It's one of the reasons why we have done the Real Men Read, Pumps and Pearls and Books to ensure that our children are understanding um, as it relates to reading books and comprehending. Uh, so happy holidays to everybody. Uh, happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, peace, love, and happiness. I, I ditto uh, everything that has been said, and I thank each and every one of you, anyone that's uh, in our system that's viewing us um, on Zoom. I hope that's something that, that really echoes because we've had a couple of tough years and um, we, we really do appreciate you. We don't just say it. And I don't want people to take it for granted that we're just uh, arbitrarily just saying it, but we really mean it. And I hope everyone have a, a Merry Christmas. And uh, I just wanna let all the principals know uh, I'm available to come and attend your Christmas parties at your schools. <laughs> um, I'm going to Buckner with Miss Misty and uh, Moreland Road Friday, so uh, my my calendar is open. So just just send me the invites and I and I'll be there. With that being said, uh, no further business. Uh, can we get a motion to adjourn? Motion, second. All in favor? Thank you for a great meeting and happy holidays. <laughs>